Dungeons and Daddies is a rowdy, horny, violent podcast for grown-ups. Content warnings can be found in the description. FBI Case File 34A-325. Subject, Lincoln Lee Wilson. Well, well, well. What do we got here? Who are you guys? How do you get into my house? Lincoln Lee Wilson, sophomore, very tall soccer player. Well, well, well. You know what, Jim? My uh, adopted kids, all 12 of them, the orphans, they're varsity soccer players too. Three of them are dating. I tried to get them to stop. I'm not comfortable with it. Eh, you know, kids will be kids. Yeah, I guess they will. But you know what they're not? Fucking criminals. You're right. I'm a criminal. Take me to prison. Those firefighters at EMT. I murdered them. Whoa, murder? Uh, no. We really couldn't care less if you dabble in murder. It's it's fine. Why won't anybody arrest me for my murder? Look, kid, we don't have time for your Catholic guilt. Oh, no, I'm not Catholic. I mean, my dad was raised Catholic. He's not anymore. I mean, I don't, it's, I'm not against it. I mean, I respect Shut it. up. Okay, okay. Oh, just want your friend, Taylor Swift. Taylor, why? Take this bracelet, put it on him, and keep it on him. Oh, no, I mean, this is not his style. I don't think he's going to just put this on. That's your problem. If you tell him or anyone else what's going on, or anything we've told you here tonight, we'll make sure your other daddy is just as gone and dead dead as your last one. Brad's dead? No! Oh, we, we don't know. We just, we just uh, assumed he was. You'll go oh into foster God. care. We'll put Marco in prison. No, we can do dead. that. We get off on doing that. That's Why? our whole thing. What? Nobody can stop us. Especially not you. I'm not gonna Because you're a kid. You got 48 hours to put the bracelet on him or you can consider yourself an orphan. Again. Let's get out of here. Oh, hey, Link. Sorry I'm late. I picked up pizza on my way home. Who are you, uh, who are you talking to? Um, no one, Dad. Okay. Oh, by the way, sorry, they were out of pineapple today, so all we have is, is pepperoni. <laughs> oh, oh, my baby boy. My ba I know, I know, I know. I'm, I'm sad too. Pineapple's so good on pizza. I love it. it. Is, uh, yeah. it's, 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 this is about the pizza. <laughs> Welcome to Dungeons and Daddies, not a BDSM podcast. This is the story of four teens searching for their lost dads in a world forever changed. And for that one time, their granddads accidentally unleashed an eldritch god. I'm Benedict Cumberbatch, American man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Freddie Wong. I play Taylor Swift, the block rocking, samurai sword wielding, katana chopping, weep teen ranger, ranger of the group. This week's rad fact, Taylor's uh, the best person on the debate team. He's the best one on the debate what? team. It's too bad <laughs> that he's not on this debate, but he Damn. slays Damn. at debate. Well, you didn't win literally any arguments when we were trying to agree what debate to, like, you weren't good at debating with us. That like, the art of debate, as anybody who has done debate can tell you, has very little to do with your ability to manage your day-to-day -day life and your actual disagreements with your friends. <laughs> debate is about saying as many things as possible so that you get as many points on the board as possible so that your opponent can't refute them all. I'm, of course, speaking about a style of debate because I don't know if you guys did any of you guys do debate in high school? No. No. I didn't do it, but I was friends with all the debate people. There's ones where you can prep beforehand. There's ones where, for example, like they give you what the subject is and you have an hour to research it. There is a type of debate that is basically just get as many arguments out as possible. And if your opponent can't refute any one of those, that counts as a point on your mm. side. That's Taylor's specialty, the gish gallop, the say as many things as possible. It's like when they shoot all that chaff off in the dog fight and the missile yeah, can Yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm. That is the debate style that Taylor was right. a master at. And unfortunately, you have no access to him because he's going to be taking that skill to the FBI. Hey, everybody. My name is Matthew Arnold. I play Lincoln Lee Wilson, the stay-at-home sports kid, protective paladin of the group. I don't know. I feel like Link might die or go to prison forever <laughs> this episode. So, like, just some basic facts. His birthday is March 3rd, um, and... Every year he celebrates his birthday by his dad's take him to Outback Steakhouse, which is the most popular restaurant in America now. Since, <laughs> since, oh, my God. Since, uh, since the Truly sports. an apocalypse. Yeah. Nobody's under the age of 40 that shows up other than his parents because everybody that goes to the birthdays are just Marcos and... He's an old soul. Grant's dad's. Yeah. So, you know, he just sits out back. How many blooming onions does he get? That's pretty much all he eats. He gets Blooming as many as he wants on his birthday, which means he gets half of one because you can't eat a whole Blooming Onion by yourself. It's too That'd much. be wild, yeah. Yeah, that's a lot. That's it. Crikey. I'm expecting presents next year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, everyone. I'm Will Campos, and I play normal oak, plain Jane, humdrum, ordinary garden variety, run-of-the-mill teen. Snoozers. Uh, yawn. Rad fact about normal. If normal seems like he's got a bit more swagger, a bit more pep in his step, it's because he started wearing lit to bring his height up to 64.6 <laughs> inches, which is the average height, according to Google, of a 14-year-old boy. Okay. What is a lift? Lift is like, like you slip them into your shoes to yeah. make yourself a little taller. He was sitting at like 63.7 inches. He's like, I got to normal this up. 
So he brought himself up to 64.6. It's like that picture of Robert De Niro on the set of the Irishman, the Irishman where he's huge. like his huge boots that make him as tall as. <laughs> Wait, so how many inches are those lifts? That's like a 0.9. Oh, okay, so it's yeah. like very subtle. Yeah. Okay, okay. A don't they, don't they smash the top of your feet into your no, shoes, you, though? I Norm guess you can loosen your laces. Uh, flip you can flops. loosen your laces. <laughs> <laughs> With lifts. <laughs> he wears Yeezys. So everyone can see that he's wearing lifts. Yeah. That's such like an archaic rumor to spread about school. Did you know that? Normal wears lifts. lifts. Why don't I do this? You could, because you're a short you king and you respect yourself. Yeah. 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 Like I could me. be five foot seven and a half. You've seen the fucking surgery you can do, right? Where they just extend your bones. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, they break your bones and they put like external fixators in it. And then your bones allegedly like grow into the space, but only a few inches. And they're kind yeah. of fragile giraffe legs yeah. at that And they that can't point. do it to the one bone that matters. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Your spinal cord. <laughs> spinal cord. That's Damn. right. You need another vertebrae. They can't do that. My other dad fact is normal is saving up for the bone thing. <laughs> Hi, I'm Beth May and I play Scary Marlowe. <laughs> A goth punk seeker of darkness who is not like the other warlocks. Fun fact about Scary. She knows that black is technically a shade and not a color. You know, mm -hmm. she knows that. Uh -huh. So if you're wondering what her favorite color is, it is mole's breath from home depot that's right a very 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 dark shade of gray hi i'm anthony birch i'm your dad my dad fact is that my favorite color is blue because i'm colorblind and blue is the only one i know what i'm getting oh <laughs> <laughs> you were all hanging out at taylor's house you were studying for the big debate against the mayor who has the sauce. Mm -hmm. The mayor made themselves known to you. This also happened after you all found out that Lincoln had to some extent kind of betrayed all of you or at least just Taylor by putting a wristband on him that the FBI could listen to him through. He gave us friendship bracelets under false pretense. Which yeah, that's the big betrayal. is a betrayal. That's, that's actually the bigger betrayal because the FBI thing, that's just following the rule of law. Like the false bracelets is a betrayal. He violates everything that Lance Armstrong <laughs> and Livestrong bracelets stand for. Which in hindsight wasn't a lot. <laughs> yeah, he cheated, which means he's actually very much in the spirit of the Lance Armstrong motif. Turns out that the FBI was listening for something you didn't know what until the mayor grabbed your wrist, spoken to your bracelet tailor, and said that Nicholas Foster was nearby, even though he was not. And who is that? A portal opened. Taylor and Link were grabbed and thrown into what seemed to be a very large protective cell, like a prison cell type thing, like the thing they held the Hulk in in the mm -hmm. first Avengers movie. You know what I'm talking about. Then the portal closed. Not before a certain ventriloquist dummy was also hurled through the Yes, portal. also a yeah. tiny teeny was uh, thrown through in lieu of a gun and the portal closed. And then the mayor kissed one of you on the forehead and said, see you at the debate and then disappeared, left the house. So you are yanked through the portal by three men in hazmat suits, big yellow hazmat suits. Once the portal is closed, uh, the FBI agent that you saw come to your house link says something into his earpiece. The three hazmat suited men immediately start moving backwards towards the door while still facing you. They are going to leave the cell and lock it behind them. The cell is basically a big flat room that is surrounded on all sides by what looks kind of like glass. And on every side of this cell, you can see machines set up. You can see people holding guns. You can see security cameras. Like Magneto's cell in X2. Yeah. Very much like Magneto's cell. Or this X1, is, I guess. Too. This is very much an observational sort of thing. They thought that something very dangerous was going to be inside here that they needed to keep an eye on and needed to have countermeasures in case it escaped. Mm. If you want to roll perception, I can give you more details. Yeah. Let's see what the old perception I got six. gives me. It's a room. Okay. And I got a 23. You can feel that A, you were underground. You were far underground. Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I accidentally opened up my old character. <laughs> That's what that perception roll was. <laughs> oh. I can't roll a 23. Now it all makes sense. I got a four. Wait, what? <laughs> this isn't your house. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to pick up Teeny. Okay. And put him on my hand. All right. And I'm going to go to Link and I'll go. Don't worry, Link, I got this. Um, I will only speak through my lawyer. That's right. It's to me, his lawyer. <laughs> so while you're doing that, they close the door and lock you inside. Oi, oi, hey, this, this, this can't be illegal. Call. The FBI agent that you've seen, Link, presses a button on a console and says, uh, what, 
Did he transform so he looks like Link? So, somebody run a scan. What? Where's, where's the fucking... Hey, the, no scanning without my consent. They press a button and... What the fuck? This red light kind of scans up and down the room. Ugh. He leaves the fucking intercom on because otherwise it's going to be a really boring scene. You hear a technician turn and go, it doesn't look like there's any sign of the savior. <laughs> What? <laughs> the devil savior. He goes, God, fuck it. You see the FBI agent like lose his fucking mind and just like sort of rub his hands over his eyes. That's our banging on the window. Oh, hey, hey, wow. So we're not what you're looking for. Um, I, I kind of point over to Taylor. I didn't tell him anything. How did the, the mayor, you should look into that. That's Let me the wild. fuck out of here. Why don't you just go ahead and sit down? I got to think about this. Then he turns to another similarly suited agent, but one that's shorter so that you can immediately tell that they're an inferior. Ah. And, oh, and yeah, they both look exactly like Freddy, but one's wearing lifts. One's wearing lifts, one. yeah. <laughs> well, one of two things are going to happen. Either he's going to show up here looking for the fucking kid, or, I don't know, do we, do we get rid of him? Do we let the kids go? Do yes. we, do, Taylor, do we, they're not listening to me. You said, you, who is your lawyer? Oh, my lawyer right here. Oh, hello. Is oh. me the lawyer? You see, this way, Link, we can No, say, I mean, but your mom, like, you must have a lawyer. Your mom, your, my mom yeah, has an entertainment well. lawyer oh, God. who negotiates contracts as pretty much useless for everything else. We want our phone call. This is illegal, yeah, right? Hey, we got a phone call. Go ahead and roll persuasion. Not five. Nine. I cry. <laughs> <laughs> they turn off the mic, and then you just see them, like, freaking out. It's safe to say know. that they're ignoring us, so we're going to have to bust out of here. We're, like, surrounded, right? We're, like, in a clear cell. Yes, you're in a clear, empty cell with no furniture in it. No furniture. Okay, but, like, there's air, right? Air there's comes in air. Here. How does air come into the cell? There's a vent you can see above on the top of the cell. So the whole cell is glass. Can we reach it if we stand on each other's shoulders? <laughs> uh, why don't you try acrobatics? <laughs> hey, like, give me a boost here. Uh, okay. I think they're going to see us, but all right, here. here. Well, what, yes, but what are they going to do about it? I guess open the door. Exactly. <gasps> we could run. Exactly. I'll take the vent. You go barrel out the front way. Okay. All right, I rolled a 13 plus one, 14. Oh, that's a natural 20. Whoa. <laughs> all right. A lot of bad ones before then. What does your natural 20 do? You were climbing up me, right? I think yeah. the moment you get to my legs, I just fucking like perfectly shove him straight up into the vent. Oh, okay, great. So you're just already in the vent. How big is this vent? It is man-sized, like all... All good Classic vents. Like vents. All good vents. This yeah. vent checks out. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know what? No, they were smarter. This one's smaller than a man, but it's the perfect size for a teenager. Teen exactly. size. Teen size vent. Small enough for a man, strong enough for a woman. <laughs> <laughs> so I get yeeted into this vent. Right. And everyone sees it. Oh, no, but do they? Roll perception, <laughs> Andy. <laughs> They're arguing about because they got the wrong person. No, no you the whole guard. You roll stealth. Okay. I'm not rolling. It's not two people, Freddy. It's an entire group of people who have guns looking at us. Two plus three, five. Five. Yeah. Okay. So they definitely see it. As you're climbing through this vent, you hear it distant at first. I'm gonna hold my breath. And then, okay, great. So roll a uh, constitution. I go, look, <laughs> look over here, don't look up there. And I start doing the whatnot. Fuck <laughs> me. Four plus three, seven. Okay. I managed to hold my breath perfectly by run out by the time whatever this is gets to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was no gas. You, and then you have to take a big breath when the <laughs> gas gets to you. And immediately you start crying. It's acidic, it's burning the inside of your lungs. It's not going to kill you, but it's going to take a lot to make you keep crawling through this vent. I'm glad it's you two stuck in this like jail situation, because when I heard this, this is, I would have been like, oh, no, snakes. <laughs> that's, yeah. that, that, that's, that's what I thought it was. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was snakes. Snake the vent. FBI was going to release snakes into the vent. <laughs> release okay, the shit. snakes. So is he just passed out up there? I think it's like tear gas. It's right? tear gas. It's like really hurting Ooh, you. So you can decide fuck. to try to keep going or you what's can go the, back and get out. What's the penalty if I try to push through? If it gets bad enough, you're going to start taking really bad HP damage and then you might pass out. I think I'm going to press forward. Okay. I assume that the vent is also clear. Oh, no, no, no. It's a diehard vent that's made out of metal Okay, okay, stuff. okay. It's not like the X-Men thing where it's like a full 360 yes, no, completely they empty, yeah. and there's just a me inside like a tube yeah. 10 feet in the air. Okay. okay, if you want to keep going, go ahead and give me another constitution roll. Come on, motherfucker. Give me some. I just don't understand his endgame. <laughs> 16 plus 3, 19. 19, Okay. So you get just far so enough. You get 19 inches forward before <laughs> yeah. you pass out from pain. So you get just far enough to see that there is a grill in front of you that's pointed Could downward. Some hamburgers on that. At yeah. the outside of the cell that Link is currently in. So Link's in the cell. You manage to move just beyond the bounds of the cell. Okay, fine. I'm going to turn around and then face back the way I came because you said it's very small. It's a tight size thing. Uh -huh. I'm going to fill my body up so that the gas now vents downwards into that room. They release tear gas into themselves. Oh! 
Oh, that's fun. Oh, so you're gonna block the vent? I'm gonna you're gonna Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, I'm gonna Winnie the Pooh it <laughs> so that I shoot tear gas into their control room, and all those Poindexters won't be able to handle it. That's pretty fun. Yeah, how are you blocking it? Are you just like curling up like well, a? It doesn't ball? matter because I roll a one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you pass out. <laughs> I tried to do that. Be like, I need to turn around so I'm not facing the vent. And so as I'm trying to like turn around like Austin Powers style inside this vent, I just pass out. I just pass out. You hit yourself on the head really hard as you try to do a quick three point turn <laughs> inside of this fucking vent. <laughs> so like I'm hearing him like crawling above me, and then I hear him stop. Yeah, you hear a cough. loud bang, and then it stops, and then you <laughs> oh, you hear God. one of the the scientists outside go like, "Oh, I can see his face in the grill. He's like, yeah, he's unconscious. He's good." We're back to Scary and Norm. Ah, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. Oh, oh, oh. oh, did you see that? What's going on? I can't believe I'm stuck here now. They get to go in, like, the cool, like, all universe. I bet they're having the time of their lives. I bet, like, I don't know. I bet they're being, like, interrogated and getting to say cool things. Like, no, fuck you. And I'm just stuck here. Scary. What do we do? Do we, what? It's, oh, for, like, the debate? Well, I don't know anything. <laughs> like, what, what they're, they're, they're guys just left. They're, what's, what's going on? I'm freaking out. So May Hales, who is here, says, okay, okay. I think what you can focus on is trying to win the debate, because that's an immediate problem. Who were those guys, Mrs. Hales? She puts up quotation marks. That's the FBI. Why are you putting quotation marks yeah, up? What's like, that about? So are they, like, legit or not? Because they're not really the FBI. They're a shadow organization inside the government. Do they suck like the FBI? They suck worse than the FBI. Ooh. They're called the FBI, but it doesn't stand for Federal Bureau of Investigation. They're the Final Boreanaz Initiative. <gasps> Whoa. What? I don't know who that is, but I sit so down. I can tell you all about it. <laughs> <laughs> They're really, really obsessed with demons, not doodler stuff, not like what we're doing, trying to save the world. They're really obsessed with demons and hell dimensions and all that kind of stuff. Oh, that sounds and metal as fuck. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, but not the way they do. They're being like narcs about it. They're not like pro demons. They're but like our demons. Oh, okay. Our friends are they going to be okay? Are they going to kill them, with lady? What's going on? As long as none of them have any like demon DNA in them, they'll be totally fine. Oh, I okay. Yeah. That's probably not a. I mean, all right. Yikes. Uh, Oh, I don't know, Norm. Like, I get, like, vibes from Link. He's so tall. <laughs> <laughs> and human. Like. Huh. Oh, I, I, I gotta sit down, and then Norm just sits down on the floor and starts rubbing his temples. This has been a lot. This is a lot. This is a lot to ask of a 14-year-old. May <sighs> says, I know, I know it's a lot. What I would recommend is that you just get as good a night's sleep as you can. I'll, I'll head into Wrighton's dungeon. I'll pick some locks. I'll see if I can find some items that can help me find them. You just need to have a good day at school tomorrow You're for your debate. Are you fucking kidding me? I don't, this, I'm trying to be calm. I'm trying to be the adult, but what else can you do? I don't know where they are. You don't know where they are. You need to worry about the mayor because if you can't, there's going to be an incursion point. There's demon guys running around. We almost got killed by the mayor and we still got to do our homework tonight. That's what you're telling me. I mean, I don't think we need to do like homework, homework, but if you could take point on the debate, <laughs> like I'd really appreciate it. But May's got a point. Like we should get a good night's rest or whatever. I could tell you a bedtime story if you want. Oh, that'd be great. As weird as this sounds scary, I think that might actually calm me down. It's just, you know, it's just been a lot lately. And no, I, I totally get it. I totally get it. Okay, so once you find a time... I crawl were... into uh, Taylor's bed. <laughs> <laughs> you huddle one of his body pillows? Yeah. There are like these four kids, right? And okay. they were living in a town in uh, like Maine, right? Keep going, this is helping. So like... They weren't very popular, but they became, like, best friends or whatever. Okay. But, like, that summer, like, a lot of kids were going missing. Uh, uh, and, like, okay. they didn't know, like, what was causing it. But eventually, it turned out to be this evil clown that, like, could personalize okay. whatever each kid was super scared of. So, like, what are you scared of? Uh, clowns? Fuck, that's perfect. <laughs> so, you know, for you, if this thing... We're real, like. But it's not, right? Mm, no, I mean, it could not. be like, look at all the crazy stuff. Maybe it's like, do I think about it? It makes it real. Yeah, that's kind of like what happens in the story, too. Oh my God. So they think that they get rid of it, right? Okay. But uh -huh. no way. They grow up and they have like kids and they think that their lives are cool, but no, it follows them like. <laughs> All the way until they're adults. And, like, I don't remember what happens after that. I think, like, the second part was kind of sucky. Of the story, at least. Not that I'm making it up. But anyways. <laughs> May Hales leans over and goes, thank you for omitting certain details from that story. Oh, 
Kids also like all no 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 and then and then you hear a computerized voice go boop 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 Taylor no longer detect and then the lights in the room dim down and like purple lights and pink lights turn on and like smooth jazz anime covers start to play and like hello ladies wait when you're not there it appears that the man Taylor has stepped out and has given you the run of his room. Please. Yeah, that's probably something it would say. Please. To make us feel at home, right? That happens every time you leave. Well, if it detects, room. if there's people in there, if my Alexa detects that there's people in there and I'm not there, then clearly <laughs> Taylor's mom is very so your rich. Mom's cleaning, or your mom just goes into your room for any reason. Please make yourself your comfortable. Your mom learned not to stay in your room for more than 35 <laughs> yeah. seconds at a time if you're not in there. Please make yourselves comfortable. There's a monster energy drink to your left and then like the lights like turn on to highlight that energy drink fridge like please avail yourself from the many ramunes inside you know what scary that story wasn't as scary as this i'm going home (laughs) help this can't be legal my friend is he okay also what Where's my dad? Is my dad okay? They press the button down, and the FBI agent who came to your home says, Do either of you have a way of summoning Foster? Foster? Yes, Nicholas Foster. His dad. So you really don't know shit about shit. Okay, great. This is going to be be a waste of time. Press the pusher button. One of the fucking walls of the vent just like (laughs) comes out a little bit, and on a pneumatic arm just goes (laughs) towards you and just slowly pushes you back the way you came through the vent. Uh, And like a a crane game, your ass just falls down through the, uh, yeah, like a loose turd, just falls out through the vent that you came from. And when you land, the shock of landing kind of wakes you back. I I catch him very gently. Okay. Aw. Yeah. And I put him down. I go, sleep, sleep well. Sleep well, oh my, my prince. <laughs> okay, if you want to be not conscious for this dialogue scene, then no, I'm, I'm back. I'm back up. It's just wake up. I slap you. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. are you doing? Did he I find almost, anything up there? We gotta get out of here. I almost made it. I almost Help. made it. By the, hey, that was a good toss. Are I, you on the cheer team? You totally could be on the cheer team. Open fields, that's where I live. This is, I'm getting so claustrophobic. I hate this. <laughs> I'm just like, I start running. I'm like running around like an animal, like around a circle, just freaking out. I start pounding. So you're having the death of a kid on your hands in five seconds. I swear to God, I can't handle this. Yeah, like threaten to kill me. Take me hostage. I'm going to, no, I couldn't. I would never do that. Looks like it's up to me. <laughs> and I'm going to get Link in the rear naked choking back. If you don't let us out, I'm <laughs> killing this kid. <laughs> and his blood will be on your hands. So the FBI agent, like, like raises a finger as if he had an idea and then you do that and his finger like goes limp and he goes ah um i was gonna say if you don't do something we're gonna kill your friend but you're gonna kill him so <laughs> so uh, uh that's right link this is the ow. secret of debate you always gotta keep him guessing i push him off me yeah okay fuck this we'll kill both of you what if you don't stop us. If you want to roll insight, you can try stop to see. you. I mean, 13 plus 2, 15. I, eight. I don't know what you're saying. Hey, you don't know what he's saying, but Taylor, you can see that when he says stop us, he's looking directly at you, Taylor. What the fuck do you want me to do, dude? Whatever it takes to prevent this from happening. And the ceiling tiles <laughs> above you unfurl, and you see a couple of like space age looking ass little laser turrets. They point at you through the glass. That is pure heat that is going to pass through unharming the, uh, the cell that you're in, but it will vaporize you in about three to five seconds after I hit this button. So if you feel like, I don't know, calling for someone who might help you or unleashing a power that maybe you didn't know you had, you've got 10 seconds. Can we take at his watch. a quick time out? I feel like there's often a misunderstanding between adults and us children, but like you did happen to realize when you took us out, there was a elected official like in our room weird and dangerous like don't you think maybe that would be better than us two idiots that just we're just what the weird person in the room did they have uh demonic energy i mean yeah I mean, that's one word for it yeah freaking she was wild was she on fire no okay no, not, the, no, the, the not, de- no, not demonic no, no, energy then not, okay waste of fire. my time okay 10 oh. <laughs> nine <laughs> miss hale miss hale please eight. help oh, I, I'm, I'm working for a secret organization called daddy's i'm, I'm, <laughs> ratting, I'm, ratting, I'm ratting the whole yeah, thing out i don't out. want to work there anymore i, don't want to work there. I, I just I, want to find I, I'll my dad you want you want to take us to court i'll rat them all out these people were all look our dads are gone they made us do this against our will they made us do this against our will 
They're kidnapping children. That's right. They're forcing them to do things that they were meant to do. I have nothing to do with this. I swear to God. I just want to watch anime. I fucking play with my but swords, okay, man? Our boss kills people, and now the FBI is killing kids. I know kids. exactly what she looks like. I have every information you need on her. I, she, you can put her away. I don't my care. Dad. I don't care. I'll give you her number right my, here. These are all the things that she gave my us. My dad kills for a living. <laughs> just help us, please. Uh, okay, both of you roll. Because you're not lying. You're just giving everybody up. So I guess roll persuasion with advantage. <laughs> oh, thank God. 18. <laughs> I got 19. Okay. I'm hugging Taylor. <laughs> also. No, here's what it is, Matt. We're both hugging each other and then over each other's shoulders. We're just screaming about how we're going to rat our friends out. <laughs> so the agent cocks their head and presses a button and the turrets retract back into the ceiling. He goes, so you guys really don't know anything, huh? About anything. I know well, everything about daddies. I will yeah. show you the headquarters. There's all kinds of weird shit going on. We know quite a bit. It's just I don't know what you're talking about. We're just oh, we're just trying to save our dads and we're trying to stop this weird stuff from happening because uh, people are dying. They say, "What do you know about Code Purple?" Uh, we've heard we've heard of it. What do you know? We about don't know it? anything about it. They said, "Don't do it." That's the thing that they told us. They said, "Don't do it." Okay. Are you gonna kill us? Uh, that remains to be. And then at that moment, you see a red klaxon going off behind him, and it sort of fills the room with red light. Somebody punches their way through the door, and you can see that there's a long hallway leading to what looks like an elevator that the doors are just closing up, and this person's running hurriedly. You can hear the guy go, what, what's going on? And they say, he's here, he's coming. The savior demon's here, he's fucking here. And they go, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. And fear, like all the blood drains from this agent's face. And he goes, uh, okay, okay. If you want to get out of this alive, if you want any of us to get out of this alive, you're going to work with us. You're going to do what we tell you to do. Right? Right, kids? Right? Yeah, you're the FBI. We're kids. <laughs> what are you, well, yeah. Roll insight real quick. Four. 15 plus two, seven. When Link says you're the FBI, you see the lead agent like snicker for a second. Um, <laughs> and he goes, okay. <laughs> like all their shirts, like these look like they bought them on Venice. <laughs> the laser turrets come back out. He makes a bunch of like hand gestures at all the men with guns. And all of them kick the doors open and leave them open. And they all point down the hallway towards the elevator. And you can see, even from this distance, the fucking elevator has like, you know, it's, it's got a long way to go. You can see the little like Okay, so they're all looking away from, from us. They're all looking away okay, from so me right I now. Like, I think he's boost me back up there, bro. Yeah, let's, let's fucking get out of here, dude. Get fucking get oh out of here, bro. Right, dude, roll stealth up. with advantage. 18. Oh, natural 20 plus 3, 20. Wow. Okay. So you managed to... have done it once. Yes. Yeah. I'm not going to make you roll for the athletics because you know, you know how each other's bodies feel. <laughs> um, so you managed to stealthily and quickly get right back up the vent. They've switched off the gas since they pushed you all the way to the back and they don't notice you there. So you can, again, move forward pretty easily to the grill that overlooks the spot that all of the guards are at. Half of them would notice you when you drop down. The other half wouldn't. Mm -hmm. uh, or you could keep climbing around in the vents and see what else you could find. I think we're looking for fresh air, right? Can I just be in there or do I have to roll? For I feel well, the, like it's a two man, like, you, yeah. cause you boosted him up. Yeah. So yeah. I feel like he's got to roll to pull he, yeah, you he up. Has, he has to roll athletics okay. to pull you up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very tall. So it's not as hard for me to reach the top. <laughs> two plus athletics. one, three. Okay. <laughs> so you with your weak little anime arms. Two. Okay. <laughs> I sprained my ankle when I jumped. You land and it hurts real, real bad. Can we try one more time with, if you hold Tini Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Extra, That's extra what it was. He jumps and he misses. All right. And I feel like there should be a penalty on this next roll, but then the next one, I'll hold Teeny's hand, and then Teeny's arm will go out to his, and that gives us the extra six inches to maybe grab on. Okay. I will make a strength check for Teeny to see how well Norm constructed Teeny to be the X Factor. I here. feel like that's because you made him. I think it might be intelligence. Like, how well did you craft this thing? Uh oh. <laughs> that's a 19. Okay, so yes, using Tiny Teeny will undo the penalty I was going to give you for jumping with a uh, busted ankle. Tiny is secretly made out of a bit of the actual foam from the actual teeny head. He's like birthed from the flesh of teeny himself. Yeah, it's wow. like how the Norse believe that Earth was made out of Emir's blood after they murdered him. Very similar thing. I guess I'm trying to decide between trying to just jump up again and join you, which obviously I would want to do, or just like trying to make it so that they don't know you're gone. Or we could do a three-way party split. Has any D&D &D podcast ever dared attempt the three-way party split? That feels like the Daffy Duck, like, I can only do it once. <laughs> <laughs> once again, you roll athletics, Freddy. You roll acrobatics, Matt. And then, because you're using Teeny, I won't give you a penalty for your fucked up ankle. Okay. 12 plus 1, 13. I got nine. You managed to grab him by the hand, but his legs are dangling. Okay. And now roll stealth with disadvantage. Five. Five. Okay, so they see that you're dangling out of there. So somebody goes, the kids are trying to get out of the thing. Should we, the gas, should we with the gas? And I'm going to roll to should see. Should we the gas? <laughs> should, should we the gas? Should we with the, the gas? gas. Yeah. 
he fails his wisdom throw and he goes, don't worry about the fucking kids. The fucking white whale's coming down here now. Fucking it, let them go. Who gives a shit? Let's say with that, you are now inside the vent with your boy. And if you're up to the grill where you can see down sort of into the other area, you hear bing and some elevator doors open and suddenly you can feel the heat of the room that you're in increase by about 10 degrees, like even in the, in the fucking vents. Now that I'm beginning to understand what Grant was, one of the many uh, subtle sniper skills he taught me, okay. which is just, just knowing the air direction. So I look my finger and I just want to get a sense of it. It will help me like get through the vent like the right way towards sure. uh, the central air. Yeah. So what you can feel is that basically the vents that you're in, actually, actually go, get roll, roll, roll nature, roll survival. Fucking, I got a, I got a four. I mean, I wasn't. Do it with attention. advantage because your dad's a sniper. Cool. <laughs> Oh, cool. So this time I got three, though. Okay, even better. <laughs> I'm uh, changing my dice. You know that air comes from outside. <laughs> okay, Dude, well, well, I got confident. Going, I think it's this way. And <laughs> I point straight ahead. Uh, yeah, we're going to continue crawling through the events. You can either go straight on, okay, in the, sort of in the direction toward that hallway, or you can turn to the right. Tell your survivalist, man. What, uh, where do we go? This is probably a central air system. And if they got HVAC guys pulling it along, then the straightest route is going to lead to wherever the central stuff is coming from. That's going to lead to the elevator shaft in front of us. Well, that's a demon. I know, but we're underground. The demon will go here. We'll go over whatever the hell's down there. So I think we go straight through. I hate to do this, but how well does Taylor know? Because none of us knew elevators existed a week ago. Oh, shit, you're right. Suddenly this guy's acting like an expert. <laughs> I just that's found cinema that. sends it, but I feel fine. like the moment he found out about elevators, He's done nothing yeah. but research elevators in the two weeks. He checked all the conspiracy boards yeah. of everything he could find about up down okay. rooms. Fair enough. Roll perception to see if you can hear what's going on in the cutscene that's going on beneath you. <laughs> 16. I got a 15. Okay, so you can both hear Taylor slightly better. The conversation that's going down there. It kind of echoes in the in the vent. Y- yeah, it kind of us. echoes up through the vent, like the beginning of Metal Gear Solid. You hear a voice that strikes you as ever so slightly familiar, Taylor, saying, Where is he? You hear a bunch Uh-oh, of shouting God. voices. <laughs> you hear a bunch Uh-oh. of shouting voices and people shouting for him to get down on the ground to turn off his flame, to fucking get his hands behind his back. You hear this rhythmic stepping forward because his footsteps don't sound like anybody else's because it's almost like, you know, when like you toss a little bit of water onto a really hot pan and it just sizzles like that. It's like every footstep he's taking, you, f- you can hear that and you can feel some of that heat coming up in this vent, even though you can't see him at this point. And he goes, where is my boy? You hear the FBI agent, the FBI in quotation marks agent in the back going like, he's safe for now. If you want to go ahead and make sure that he stays that way, you feel free to go ahead and step inside the suite that we've prepared for you, my boy. And you hear the hot guy uh, voice (laughs) saying... I don't think that's going to happen. Can I roll divine sense? Sure. What does that do? It lets me detect if something's good and evil. So I get a sense of if I sense like evil. So you can feel that... The it's F- not behind total cover. It's just making it out there for the rules lawyers. Are we in total cover inside this? Van- Who cares? I, Who gi- cares? I do not give a shit. Okay. So you can sense that the FBI agent that came to your house and threatened to kidnap your father is evil. Cool. You can feel that the FBI agent that's working under him that's slightly shorter is also evil. <laughs> more evil. More, well, <laughs> shorter evil. It's in a oh smaller area, so more than nerve endings. No more. <laughs> more condensed. Yeah, he's got fucking Napoleon syndrome, so if he, if he got that much power, he'd be way worse. And then the the hot person that's talking and walking forward is both good and evil. That makes okay. him hotter. Damn it. Oh, no. Yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> you hear plumes of flame exploding. You can feel the heat radiating through this metal vent and it's actually beginning to hurt and burn your hands. Do we hear a Wilhelm scream? Uh, yes, you do. You hear yeah. one Wilhelm scream. You hear another scream that's like yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Like the fucking Starcraft Academy scream. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> also, if you like went back and like listened to it again, you can hear like way low in the mix the Howard Dean scream but like it's not <laughs> <laughs> it's not like in Breaking Bad where it's so obvious it takes you out of the scene <laughs> and you hear blood hitting the fucking ground and you hear sizzling and things boiling and burning. That could just be coffee. That could just be coffee, Link. Let's go. And you are getting closer and closer to the elevator and you hear that same hot voice say, where the hell is Taylor? I look at Taylor. <laughs> I'm fucking crawling faster, okay. dude. Great, are you great, kidding? Great. <laughs> <laughs> so you make it to the vent. The vent opens just on top of the elevator. We take a quick second to marvel at the fact that you can carve a shaft out of the vent. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah, it's very scary. Incredible. If you look up, you immediately get overwhelmed with a sense of vertigo. You've only been in one up-down room and you've never been in an up-down room shaft. But even if you had, even if you were a veteran of up-down room shafts, this would have been the tallest 
up-down room shaft you've ever seen. You cannot see its terminus point. It goes on for so fucking high up and so fucking far. That's good. It means your chance of getting Emilio Estevez in Mission Impossible is like yeah. super oh. low. You'll have a lot of time to see that shit coming. Come on, Tyler. It's just like it's just like ropes in gym. I mean, I'm my gym at home, but you guys we did that too. I start climbing. What? No, wait, 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 wait. wait. Press I'm already button. like ten feet. We I'm like just just button. Button. Wait, wait. I'm just gonna press the button. We just go in here. And press you can go inside the elevator. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. I'll stay up. No, that's the scarier. I'll go in. I go in. Yeah, so I want to kick the top of it down and like press the button on the elevator for, you know, whatever the top floor is. Okay, so you kick the little thing that is presumably in the ceiling of every elevator that allows people to <laughs> Which do this. Which it isn't, by the way. I've <laughs> looked. Yeah, I've never I've actually never seen one. Yeah, me neither. But it's here. That's a full-on movie invention, isn't it? No, I've seen I've seen one before oh, in really? the wild. Really? Maybe I'm a full-on movie invention, <laughs> but I, I've definitely seen like people working on elevators from the top. Oh, cool. Well, okay. you've been in an elevator and you've looked. No, up and you've seen not when stuff. I've been in yeah, it. But I've, I've seen like you. I've seen like people working on shafts before. Uh, so I've seen I. people working on <laughs> shafts before too. I've seen people who don't have I've access seen. to the internet. <laughs> That's just so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you kick open the uh, vent and you drop down into the elevator shaft and just as you're about to press the button, the doors open and you see one of the scientists that you saw outside your cell has been like tapping on the up button <laughs> as fast as he can. And as it opens, you can see behind him bodies that are cut in half, their wounds cauterized oh by a flaming sword. Some real Sephiroth in Shinra HQ energy. It's very similar, this is yeah. very similar to Sephiroth in Shinra <laughs> HQ. <laughs> and if Hero was here, she'd be like, oh, it's just like the ninja in Metal Gear Solid 1. <laughs> you see a big, bright flame near the cell that you used to be in, then you think maybe a fire's gone wild or something like that, but then the scientist who just pressed the button to open your door Goes like, oh, Jesus, it's the kid. And I fucking Sparta kick his ass backwards. <laughs> this little fucking nerd is going to get the full brunt of a this is Sparta heel kick on him. Sure, give me a, an, an attack man. with advantage, an unarmed attack with advantage. Zephyr strike! At the same time, I'm pressing the closed door button. Uh, those don't do anything, so it means nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Still pressing it faster. It, you know what? It makes you feel better. 19 Heal plus, one HP because of the placebo effect. 19 plus 3, 22, wow. baby. Wow. You, this is Sparta, this guy, so fucking hard. He goes back like three feet and lands directly on his back, which is a really nice reveal for that fire that you're looking at to all of a sudden get sucked back into one person. And you see somebody that looks kind of like they might sort of, in certain circumstances, be related to you. You see a man with one arm. With flaming, what? Hair, with flaming hair, oh my God. with piercing eyes, with a beard that has not been shaved in some time, but in a way that's cool rather oh, than gross. Shit. He is wearing a leather jacket, but not like the kind of like, oh, I do motorcycles, like a cool, <laughs> like, a, a two, like a cool one, like a tasteful one. In his remaining hand, he is holding a flaming sword. Oh, uh, hold on. Insight, what kind of sword? Go ahead and roll insight. Or go uh, roll perception yeah, yeah, with 13. advantage. I mean, because that's all that Taylor has eyes for. Let's be honest. 13 plus 2, 15. With a 15, you can tell that this is a perfect, somehow it, it should be a recreation because it doesn't make any sense that they would have the real thing. Right. But it seems to be Hanzo a full-on Hattori Hanzo, Hanzo Katana. Steel? And as you say that, um, <laughs> <laughs> his demon eyes. So he's doing the thing where his head's down, but his eyes look oh, up. Oh, yeah. yeah. That shit, and he locks eyes with you, and then he starts T1000 running straight button, button, at you. Button, 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 button. I've been pressing it this whole time. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, the doors slowly close as this figure starts running at you, and then he throws the sword as hard as he can toward the center of where the doors will close, and I'm gonna have him roll. So the sword flies through the air in slow motion, and as it approaches the open elevator door, you see this man yell, Taylor, down! And you have mo a moment to do one thing. I mean, I, would, I guess I'm going to hit the floor. Yeah, I hit the floor, too. Cool. The sword is long enough. It's like one of those big fucking like Uchikanata like yeah. fucking swords. That Uchi the Uchikatana. Hilt Uchikatana. Thank you. That the hilt of it just barely is long enough that even with the blade of the sword embedded in the back of the elevator, the doors can't close fully around the hilt of it. So they blink and they begin to boink open. I've uh, seen this on the internet too. Damn, if we had, if we were in handcuffs, we could do a cool thing where we use the sword to get rid of our handcuffs. <laughs> During that run, I tied my hands, and then when I get there, I go, "Oh, perfect!" <laughs> and I reach behind my back and I use the sword to undo perfect. My hand. Yeah. Like, so yeah, you have one action basically before he is fully in the elevator with you. It's levered in, right? So can I just like 
lift it up so that it clears the doors? Yeah, sure. Because I'm still freaking out. Yeah, you're still freaking out, but the sword is kind of also made of fire. So go ahead and give me a strength check to see, uh, like, but can guess, you lever it up just enough what, that it but gets... Guess, but guess what? A feature of me. I have hellish resistance. I have resistance to fire damage without knowing it. Oh, I wonder I why that is. wonder why that is. No, you don't, but I'm doing it. <laughs> What am I using? I feel like you're using a strength check to see if you can move the sword, the hilt of the sword, just sort of like angle it a little bit up so that it's out of the way of the closing door. Yeah, push it deeper into the elevator. Or you could do that. That's totally cool. Oh, Either yeah. one, yeah. Uh, 10 plus 3, 13. That'll do it. You can feel that even though this blade is hotter than hot, in the words of Ruby Rod, it is hot, hot, hot. Um, <laughs> you can feel like this entire elevator now feels like an oven that you are just sort of trapped inside. But to you, it's not that bad. It actually feels kind of comforting in a weird way. Like it's warm, like it's a nice blanket being put around your shoulders on a cold winter's day. And you manage to angle the sword up just in time for the doors to once again close as this figure is trying to close the distance between you and he goes, wait, wait, son, and the doors close. Oh my God, is this Nick Foster that's Taylor's dad? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so as we're going up in the elevator. Yes, then there's only two buttons. There's the very bottom and the very top. Am I, am, am I like, is it on fire? Yes, it is on fire. Am I dying? <laughs> Why would you be dying? Because you said it was super hot, but it was comfortable like for hot? him. Are we talking yeah, bake a Totino's sauna, pizza sauna, hot? Sauna, or like, sauna. Yeah, it's oh, like, okay. you know when you open an oven or step outside in Arizona and you yeah. just get that like woof of like okay, hot yeah. air? Okay. It's just that, but okay. constantly. You're not going to die from it. It's just okay, very unpleasant. The way you described it was like, he's invincible too. Okay. You say you didn't know your dad. Is that your he dad? He looked kind of like me, didn't he? Yeah, but like dangerous, like real bad. I, know, I look dangerous. I mean, I mean, like cool, like like you. <gasps> Maybe that's what you look like when you get older. I did take a twenty three me test. And I did say it have non human DNA. This what? all checks out. Man, you're lucky your dad's here. <laughs> I start pressing down. <laughs> no, wait, no, wait. <laughs> Dude, that's your dad, and I felt he was like good, but like also evil. But like, I don't know, he didn't seem angry at us, and I, I don't know what's up there. Well, he can take the elevator. We gotta figure out what the hell's going on. And I'm not, I don't okay. know, I don't, well, I don't think you can turn an up down room around after it started going up. Uh, you can't. So the up down room goes on for another 15 minutes, and that, <laughs> oh my god, that, <laughs> we quickly run out of things to talk about. Yeah, <laughs> just sitting there being like, yeah, yeah um, they should play music in these. I think it would be like a cool, smooth, like La Soprano saxophone. I feel like it really helped kind of yeah. make this go. A little okay. bit faster. Eventually, the elevator shutters to a stop. The doors open, oh. and you see 12 fully kitted out, body armored, military looking types holding assault rifles at the door. You guys going down? The next day, dawn breaks. The crimson sky goes from black to red in almost an instant, the way that it does every morning. Ew. Oh, oh that's what? the worst thing yet. That that's sucks. so unsettling. Yeah. Uh, and sucks. It's just like the sun turns oh, on? Kinda, yeah. Wow. The black sun still burns angrily in the sky as you head back to school for your debate. Oh, man, it sucks getting to school before sun on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hit up scary by her locker before class. What's up? I'm feeling bright eyed and bushy. I mean, actually, I'm feeling dark and like scary. Good. This seems like good that you're being so. So I can't remember. We, we left it off last night. You told me to go get a good night's sleep. So I figured you probably thought of what we should do for the debate. Right. No, like what I we took should... that monster energy that Taylor had in his room. and I stayed up watching like death metal like behind the scenes videos. It's just, it's just death metal AMVs that automatically played from the projector. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, I stayed uh, at Taylor's yeah, house. You stayed at Taylor's. You're like, well, this is pretty cool. Anime might have something going on here. <laughs> what are we, what are we going to do? What are we going to, how are we going to debate her? My stepdad, Terry, uh, um, he <laughs> always says like, be kind because you never know what somebody's been through. Okay. But I think that we take that logic and we use it to be like hella mean. Like, you know, just like sometimes I really piss Terry off by being like, I know you are, but what am I? Even when he didn't say anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so just like, I think if we like annoy the shit out of this mayor, then she won't want to be mayor anymore. Plus, it's like it's kind of weird that they have like kids debating a mayor. Like, what's the audience for the debate? Is it kids? Is it adults? That's a it whole is other kids. Thing. You could use that in your favor. Yeah, nobody wants yeah. like to be around okay. the fucking adult. I think we got this, you know? Okay. Okay, let's do it. Your debate topic should be teens are cool, and then her, she has to defend <laughs> teens yeah. are not cool, and then everyone's going to fucking hate her. Okay, you enter the government classroom, and as always, uh, Norm's mom is there, and uh, she goes, aha, the debate can finally begin, because the mayor is already standing there at a podium that looks like it's made of like a fucking like oak. It's just Does she look all fucked up and weird still? Yeah. 
still. No one is reacting to that. No, they're just like, uh, oh, wow, it's the mayor. It's impressive that somebody so important is in this classroom. Delightful. You're getting the sense maybe the more that you talk to other people and the more that you talk to the firefighters and try to explain what went on in the kindergarten, that uh, maybe people can't quite see the same things that you do, or maybe they don't want to see the same things that you do. Damn. Oh, I have an idea. Yeah, go okay. ahead. Wait, just follow my lead. Okay. I give, I give you a thumbs up. I give you a thumbs up too. I give you a second thumbs up. I s stop it at that. <laughs> <laughs> your mom gestures at your podium opposite the mayor. She goes, oh, just, just the two of you today. That's fine. That's fine. So as is so often the case, we will go ahead and start by picking the topic and then picking a side for that topic. So whoever gets to pick the topic first, then gets to pick, the other person gets to pick the side. Shit, Shit. Oh, that fucks up my plan. So the mayor says, I will allow you to pick whichever you wish. Maybe we make her pick the topic, we pick the side. Yeah, let's do that. Scare, you're really chill. I feel like we're getting along, like, you know? <laughs> Every time it's the four of us, there's a lot of arguing, but it feels like you and I are in sync here. I think that we're totally in sync. Yeah, sure. So you two are talking and one of the students, a young girl named Skylar, turns to another student and goes, is it just me or am I getting like, are they like vibes coming from those two? No. Skylar nods knowingly to herself and goes, mm, okay. You're like six. Why are you in high school? <laughs> I'm really smart. <sighs> I passed all my SATs and my ACTs. Okay, okay, my... I passed all my SATs too. I passed all my SATs, my, my uh, oh, scary oh. ass. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Skylar cocks her head and goes, she goes, with that improv, I don't know if you did. Uh, you know what, Miss Mayor, we're going to let you pick and then we'll pick the side. Yeah. Okay. The topic is, which has more influence over our personalities, nature or nurture? Nature or nurture. Which, what do you think? Well, I mean, nature's pretty badass. Like, we got that red sky and shit like that. And nurture is kind of, sounds kind of dumb and like icky. I guess nature, because, like, I'm nothing like my parents at all. Okay. And I'm trying to not be like myself, which is how my dad raised me to be. But I'm finding that kind of hard. So that would be nature, too. Yeah. We're going to say nature. We'll pick nature. Okay. I will be nurture. Okay. Damn, I feel like we just kind of handed her, like, the easy one. Like, lots of people are going to be like, oh, I love nurture. <laughs> oh, well, we'll just have to convince these stupidos that we're going to write. Stupidos. <laughs> okay, so what's going to happen is you get to go first if you wish. If not, I can go first. We're each going to get 90 seconds to speak. Oh, shit. And then we'll switch. And we'll do that, let's say, three times, trying to, you know, deal with the other person's counter argument. And this is Anthony. If you want to roll for persuasion, then the quality of your arguments will be taken better by the class. She points at the class. She says, the class is going to be the ones to decide the winner. And the class, they don't know me very well, and they don't know you very well. So it'll just be based perfectly on the content of the words that we say. So yeah. that's, that's fair. There's some kids that have signs that are like, nurture. <laughs> <laughs> nature. You guys should just bribe them in your last round. Just like, if you vote for us, we <laughs> promise to. And then just talk about how you're going to buy everyone McDonald's or something. So would you like to go first? Was there something last episode where we were like, if we win, there's no incursion? What was the... Specifically, you were trying to find a way to get the mayor to not be on the sauce anymore. Yeah. In order to do that, you needed to make her give up the thing that made her connect with the doodler in the first place, which was, to your understanding her desire to make her dead mother proud by running for and achieving office, essentially. Mm -hmm. If you win the debate, May Hales is in the back holding a sign that's just saying all this. <laughs> if, you win the, if you win the debate, it will weaken her enough to the point where maybe one of us and then an arrow pointing at her, May Hales, can kill her and <gasps> stop the incursion. And then Mayor's like, what does that say on the sign? And May Hales folds it up really quickly. Ha, man, old people can't read far away for shit. <laughs> So would you like to go first or would you like me to go first? Should we uh, toss a coin? We could absolutely toss a coin. I'm going to toss a coin and you're going to call heads or tails in the air. Okay. Heads, right? I don't know. Tails is cooler though. <laughs> say say what it is. What do you want? Uh, tails. <laughs> it's heads. Shit, fuck. <laughs> so that means I get to choose who goes first and I will choose that you go first. God damn it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. When you are ready, say start and I will give you. 90 seconds. Okay. Do you guys want to take a Do you want to go first? Ladies sure. first? Okay, go for it. You can also talk together. You're one cohesive entity. Well, I mean, like, we'll be interrupting each other, talking over each other. We've got a lot to say. Because we're going to fucking kick ass. That's fair. That's great. That's debate. great. Okay. You have to say which, start to start. I forget which side we're on, oh dude. My God. <laughs> <laughs> we're nature. We're nature. Okay. Nature. Okay. Start. So my stepdad... 
Terry Jr. Got the same fucking name I do. Pretty ridiculous, right? And so, yeah, the, you know the truth now. My name's not scary. It's Terry. It's Teresa, technically, but I've always gone by Terry until my stupid stepdad moved in and his name was Terry. And, you know, he got that from his father or whatever or his stepdad or whatever. He was had daddy issues, like, hardcore. But I don't because I don't consider him my dad. That's right. Whoever out there who, like, really was my dad, like, that's who I am. And no amount of fucking nurture or lack thereof can change me. That's right. I came out the womb ready to fucking fight and be who I am. And nothing's going to fucking change me or change anything. And that's true of all you guys. You guys are great just the way you are unless you're totally fucking stupid. Nobody's going to fucking change you by being like, oh, I'll nurture you or whatever. That's fucking bullshit. Go ahead. Follow me up, fucking Norm. Yeah! You have 24 seconds left. Yeah, and you know what? Nature's really cool. That's like Mother Nature, right? And we all come from Mother Nature. We come from the Earth, and we're beautiful children of the Earth, not of each other. You're saying your parents make you who you are? That sucks. My dad sucks. I'll say it. He's like, oh, I don't want you to be the way you are. You gotta be a different way. Our dad suck. 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 That's time. That's time. Okay. Wow. Some really cogent arguments put forth there for me to rebut. How did okay. the uh, class react to I mean, our dad were, suck as a they chant? They were, I, heard rolling, a, I heard a whole class to, chanting oh, yeah, to it. Yeah, I persuasion. 16 plus. I got a 16 plus. That's so wild that we both got 16. Wow, this were insane. Plus one. 16 plus two and 18. 17 and an 18. So yes, some of the kids in the class start chanting, our dads suck. The ones who hate their dads. The ones who hate their dads. <laughs> which is... About half of them. Everybody. Um, <laughs> there's that one kid who's just like, I quite enjoy the presence of my father. My father has, my father my has father a dealership and he's going to give it to me upon his passing. Dad, I would never say it in words. I can't handle what's going on at school today. <laughs> <laughs> now it's going to be the mayor's turn. She's going to clear her throat and say, <clears throat> Nurture. We are nothing without nurture. Scary or Terry, whatever she might wish to call herself. She has a lot of anger in her and I don't believe that's because of her biology. I don't believe that's because who she is when she came out of the womb. She told you herself she was Terry until her stepfather showed up and then she became Terry Jr. Jr. She's scared. Oh yeah, dude. Hit the she, bars. The nature of her, that she was a kind open person who used to play varsity f uh, soccer, she changed into a much more morose person because of the nurture that she got from her father that she didn't understand how to, how to handle stepfather, one might say. And, and this one, this tiny little normal boy. You know that he was teeny the teen. He was born to be teeny the teen in a sense, but what was stronger than what was in his blood? It was the desire for the love of his family and his friends. And so he abandoned what he wanted truly in his own heart to become normal. And what you see before you is a boy who is so very terrified of his own identity, so terrified of what his own DNA is, that he allowed himself to nurture himself into becoming something perverse and other. And that is the most negative element of nurture. The best parts of nurture, kindness, love, the things that we all can give freely to one another, that is what makes all of us so kind and so loving and so great. And that is why I love all of you. I yield the rest of my time. You have two extra seconds if you want it. I feel like we got off easy. Yeah, we, we got, got off got, easy, dude. So, first of all, did anyone laugh noises, when I farted? That's number one. Okay. Um, Do I roll for that? Yes. I'm trying to undermine her performance. Yes. Just give me a charisma roll. Scary's jaws on the floor, by the <laughs> way. <laughs> Scary has changed sides. I got a five. You got a five. When you did your math fart, one person, uh, Kayla was like, <laughs> but everybody else was actually kind of enraptured by what the mayor was saying. And so the mayor has also rolled for the quality of her persuasive role, and I'm not going to tell you what it is. So you have one minute for a rebuttal to everything that I just said. I cast Vicious Mockery. Okay, what does that do? Go. You unleash a string of insults laced <laughs> with subtle enchantments at a creature you can see within range. If the target can hear you, it must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or take 1d4 psychic damage and have disadvantage on the next, next attack roll it makes before the end of its turn. Ooh, okay, so she definitely failed her wisdom saving throw. So, so before the timer even started, what did you say to the mayor? You can talk about me and my stepdad all you want, but you're never going to impress your mom or who Whoa. used to be your mom. 
She's not your mom anymore. <laughs> oh my <Dude>. god! <laughs> Damn, dude, so, do not fuck with teen girls and like, holy so shit. So she takes a D. I'm gonna go ahead and advantage that. She takes two D four of psychic damage, and you see one of her eyelids just go. Like it just twitches just a little bit. Her smile does not falter, but you got through to her. If she's going to ever throw an attack at you, uh, she's going to do so at disadvantage, which actually I feel like for the purposes of this, for the next thing she says to you when she rolls for persuasion, she's going to be doing it at disadvantage cool. because she's going to be a little sense. bit more heated. Yeah. So now you have a minute to rebut the things that she said. I take the stand. Okay. And I say, go. Our love for our families is a part of who we are, not a part of what we became because of them and it is destructive yes you are right my desire to love my family causes me to do all sorts of crazy stuff that is an inborn desire the same way your inborn desire to make your mom happy was given to you by your mom and it has led you down all sorts of dark destructive paths in your life and that's because of who you are as a person not because of who you were raised to be. We hold these truths to be self-evident. Scary, put them in a body bag. We're born with this fucking rage inside of us. You can all feel it, right? Everybody in this room is angry. And that's something we didn't even know what was a part of us. Not anything that was tampered with by our parents or whatever. We were born with this. Stop. We gotta... That was good. All right, now both of you roll persuasion. 21. Three. Three. Hey, you know what? Okay. On top of Will's though, that's 25 altogether. Yeah, yeah it's not bad. Yeah. Or 24. Uh, it's 24, yeah. Yep, there we mm -hmm. go. <laughs> it's not, good thing you're not in math class. <laughs> now she is going to rebut your rebut, and she is going to get a full minute to do so. So she arches her back, which is uncomfortable to look at and uncomfortable to hear because you hear the pop of every single oh. vertebrae. Oh, and, it, oh, and the God. number of pops you hear, there shouldn't be that many vertebrae in a human body. Oh, God. And she temples her fingers together, and she takes a big breath in through her nose, and a big breath out through her mouth. And oh, she says, <laughs> I loved my mother. She was cruel. She was harsh. She emotionally abused me every day. Before she died, I thought, I will do anything it takes to ruin her. I will do anything it takes to make her disgusted by me, to live my own life. But when she got into that car accident, I realized in that moment from the nurturing that I received from my father, from my mother's mother, from my family, that I needed to do better, that I needed to be better. I was born with that very anger that you speak of burning inside of me. But what changed me? What moved all that anger aside? It was love. It was nurturing from my community, from my family. I'm a much different, much kinder, much more loving person now, despite my nature, not because of it. Three. Two. <laughs> wow. Shit, shit, shit. Fuck, fuck, is that fuck. it? Did we get another one? Uh, you're going to get another one. <laughs> All right. A minute or 30 seconds? Uh, the next one's going to be 30 seconds. Okay. God, that went really bad. This isn't going well, Scary. You're going to play the crowd. <laughs> you got to so, yeah. so play the Mrs. Uh, Swallows uh, Dash Oak Dash Garcia comes in. She goes, okay, so this final one, we're going to do final statements. It's not to each other. It's, it's just to the crowd. And uh, if there's anything, kids in the crowd, you want to yell out to really <laughs> get the best out of the, the debaters, feel free. So you might have some questions coming at you in the moment, and it's going to be it's going to be 45 seconds. You're going to get four whole 45 seconds. So uh, it's you up first, my my lovely son. But I'm I'm not biased. I'm not voting in the debate, so no 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 big deal. Both of you make great points, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Say start, and I'll hit the timer. Just promise them pizza, dude. Yeah, I can go first if you want. Go first. You go first. I'm panicking. <laughs> start. I don't fucking know who my real dad is. I have no fucking idea. But like, he was a lot cooler and a whole lot more beastly than fucking this new guy, right? And I know that I'm my, the way I am because of him. And so wherever he is, if he ever wants to come back or whatever, that'd be like totally cool because I'm really cool because of him. And also, if you How vote do you for know us, that if you've never known your dad? Because I'm so cool and because nature wins and because uh, if you vote for me, I'll give you free pizza. Oh! <laughs> I rip off my shirt, my Jimmy Buffett shirt. Okay. And I take off my stupid hat. Okay. And I wipe the fucking mascara off my face and pull my socks off and rip off my soccer shorts so I'm in my tidy whities And then I grab a dry erase marker off the table and I put a big T on my chest. I say, I am teeny the fucking teen. And no one can take that from me because that's who I am. Not who my dad wants me to be. Not who my mom wants me to be. It's who I am, God damn it! Now let's do the whatnot! And I try to do the whatnot. The what? The whatnot! <laughs> the what? The whatnot! 
<laughs> All right, roll your uh, your d20s for persuasion or performance. Those are both very performative and persuasive. I got a 14. Okay. I got a 19 plus one. Wow. Okay. Go. So with a 14, with the doing the whatnot, like you get the class to do the whatnot. They're standing, they're doing the whatnot. And your mom is like, oh no, come on. I, I mean, <laughs> I'm personally in favor of kids expressing themselves however they want to, but like I'll get in trouble. So, oh, come on. No more of the what. Okay. That's a little, that's a little graphic. That's a little graphic. Please stop. Okay. Okay. Everybody sit down, sit down, sit down. And everybody kind of calms down and settles down. But the whatnot excited them. You saw a lot of ears prick up at free pizza. <laughs> <laughs> that's what did it. This is what debating really is. Yeah. Uh, it's not what you know, it's who you can buy. And now for 45 seconds, the mayor's going to get her rebuttal. So the mayor cricks her neck to the left, oh, cricks her neck to no. the right. When she cricks her neck, her neck like goes under the line of her shoulder as she does it. It's just uh, like a little too far in both directions, that little a too far. Real shame. She puts her hands together almost in prayer and then sort of gestures at the group. And she is going to start. First of all, free pizza for a year if I win. Second of all, I'm very rich. Third of all, all of us have anger, have fear, have all these negative things that we believe define us, that we can't explain where they came from. They're just seemingly who we are, as if they'll never change. But I want to tell each and every one of you, every child in this room, every teenager, every teen, every adult, she says, mentioning to the teacher, you're not the circumstances you were given. They influence you a great deal, but you can be more with better circumstances, with better friends, with hope, with thinking, with meditation, with learning. You can be more than you were. You are more than you think you are. You have everything that you need to be perfect because you already are perfect. I yield my time. That's nature. You just said nature. If yeah. you already are perfect, then that yeah. was your nature. Yeah. Oh. Doesn't matter. That's not going on the transcript. Um, <laughs> all right. So she rolls her persuasion and a couple of the kids of the class are crying. Oh, it no. seemed to go really well. So because this is a D&D &D podcast, sort of, there need to be some dice rolling. So some dice rolling is going to happen. That got you some debate points. The majority of your debate points are going to come from me transcribing everything that we said within the confines of those spans of time during the debate. And I'm going to show it to some friends of mine that have never listened to a single episode of Dungeons well, and that's Daddies. Fucked up. <laughs> and, and they're your friends? Yeah, and I'm not going to tell them which one is me and which one is you. They are going to read through those transcripts and they're going to vote for one side or the other. Okay. And then I'm going to roll additional dice based on who gets the most votes and stuff like that. And then the next time we sit down to record, I will know who won the debate. But in the fiction of the story, Mrs. Swallows-Oak-Garcia says, what a lovely debate. Uh, both sides made in... I I, I'm, I'm undecided. I love the idea of pizza just once. I also love the idea of pizza for the rest of the year. Both of those are equally good for some reason. But uh, I just want to say thank you so much, Mrs. Mayor, Madam Mayor. Uh, and she goes, oh, it's just mayor is perfectly fine. And I want to thank my beautiful son, Nor... Or is it teeny now? Don't talk to me, mom. And I walk out of the room. Ooh, Hermie was right. Kitten does have claws. <laughs> um, but a scary also. Scary walks out of the room, too. Okay, cool. So I guess classes. Well, I can't dismiss it. We still have like another hour in the class. But uh, the mayor goes, how about that pizza? And the kids go, yay! And pizza gets brought in. We got to kill the mayor. Yeah, we got to kill the mayor. <laughs> it's actually a huge relief, Norm, because I was never going to be able to afford that pizza. Yeah, that wasn't going <laughs> to That one pizza. Because that felt like a campaign promise. So I wasn't going to follow up on that. But I'm glad they didn't either. That seemed like that could have really derailed us. I do want to do one thing. Thing. I would also like to cast Detect Good Even Evil to see if I can sense how close we are to this incursion going off. You cast Detect Good and Evil, and you sense the obvious that the mayor is evil, mm -hmm. and you sense a lingering evil sort of bubbling up underneath the government classroom. Go ahead and give me an arcana roll as well. Can I roll two? Yeah, go ahead. I got a 14. Uh, 18. 18. Okay, cool. Both of you can sense that there is a bubbling bit of evil uh, incursion juice under the surface of the government room. And if the mayor wins, then uh, you actually rolled pretty high. So you can tell that she's going to convince a lot of the people in that classroom to basically become followers of her and to uh, preach her gospel, so to speak, and to spread her word throughout the school, throughout the city, throughout the world. If you won the debate and she loses, then some of that energy is going to come out. She might be able to convince one or two people, but she's going to be much weaker if it comes down to, to killing her, um, in a sense. Yeah, she, yeah we got to kill the mayor. Fudge. Okay, so we're going to jump back to the final Boreana's initiative headquarters. You have a bunch of machine guns pointed at you. Taylor just said, are you guys going down? And then I'm going to follow up by saying like, because something's in there is killing everyone. Ah, ah, and I'm going to run out screaming. Yeah. 
Help! Okay. We're, just help us. We're just kids. Help! We run. Great. Okay. And I got my hands above me, like when the Muppets freak out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you freaking out? Persuasion or uh, deception or performance, whichever right. you like. That would be a 17 plus 2, 19. 19. 18. So both of you got pretty good deception rolls. So the FBI agents allow you to run past them. And you hear like a rocket is screaming up through the bottom of the elevator shaft. You'd hear behind you. There's an explosion as something punches through the bottom of the elevator shaft and gunfire fills the air. You go damn near death in this moment as explosions pop off from all around you. I assume you hit the deck or at least- Man, we're just still running. We're just trying to get out of here. Okay. Yeah. Don't look uh, back. Don't look back. Just keep going, Link. Go. A comet, like a comet of fire, zooms over your heads, lands in front of you. The surviving gunmen turn to point at it, so you're between the comet and them. The fire goes down again, and you see it's this person that's been chasing you, this person that called you son. He says, Taylor. <laughs> what? Don't trust anyone. And he tosses you. Oh. <laughs> Anthony's, Anthony's pulling something out again yeah. from his bag of tricks. So he tosses you this item. I mean, what do I see flying through the air? You see a ring flying through the air. Yeah, you see a small ring flying through the air. Uh, it's the ring of swapping. As a bonus action, the wearer can choose to swap places of the creature they see within 100 feet. That creature that is swapped with now wears the ring of swapping. That's by Eric Sispolsky. Thank, thank you, Eric. Thank you, Eric. Wait, is it like you switch bodies or switch places? places. You place it, but the ring has stayed in the same place. So okay. that the ring now becomes on their finger. Okay, cool. As he throws that at you and he says, don't let them use it. Make sure they don't get to use it. At that moment, more gunfire erupts near him and it tears off one of his flaming wings. And, ah, and he sort of goes down to one knee and he raises his sword. They're moving around you now, shooting at him or whatever. And then electrical bolts shoot into him, into his chest. And then they freeze him and he begins to like convulse and stuff like that. He says, you have to stop them, stop them. But you also see an open car in the parking lot behind him. Basically, you're in the lobby of the FBI. The Matrix and lobby. The Matrix lobby. And beyond the glass double doors at the uh, other end of the room, you can see a bunch of cars. But at the very least, it's outside and it's not in this room. So he is... Racked with, with uh, electricity, the bolts are just irritating him more than anything, but the electricity seems to be the thing that's making him not move. And he goes, if they take me, your grandfathers are dead. Can we get to the car and then like drive it back to him? Oh. Is he completely surrounded? The men with the guns all move around you, kind of pushing you to the sides. So you're up against the wall now, and they're now in a circle around him. The fire that's coming out of his body uh, is getting a little bit dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. And it seems like they're waiting for it to sort of go all the way out before they fully capture him. Okay. Taylor, I'm so sorry. I put you in this situation. We just get to the car. Get to the car. Don't need to tell me twice. Uh, yeah, so just, I think we're yeah. going to rush okay. to the one of the cars outside. Great. You pretty easily find that a couple of the cars are, because uh, it's the future, they're just like ID-centric push buttony cards that uh, if you have somebody's ID, you can start them up. And go ahead and roll perception or ins or investigation natural one baby mm. plus two that's a 18 okay so with an 18 i feel like you saw some ids like splatted on the ground as oh, you yeah, were so running through and you probably mm -hmm. grabbed oh here's what it was when i did the sparta kick mm -hmm. the scientist's id badge like flew off his Great. neck right and so i love that pick that up yes so you have that scientist id badge and yeah, you can start up any of these cars. They are like four-door sedans. He drives the pussy <laughs> wagon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, there are four four-door sedans and then one perfect one-to-one -one recreation of the pussy wagon <laughs> from Kill Bill. Taylor, you gotta drive. Uh, okay. Okay, I slip in and I say, uh, I know your dad just said don't trust anybody, but, but you gotta trust me. And I hold my hand out. Give me the ring. Okay. I take the ring and I look at his dad. I say, say hi to your dad for me. <gasps> and I switch places with him. Whoa! Oh my God. <laughs> and the moment I appear there, I go, "Don't shoot! I'm just a kid. I don't know what's going on." They open fire. Oh, oh. what? All our days whisked away, but is there something more to say? You know that no one knows us better than ourselves. Used to tell myself it'll be alright. Pretty lies let me sleep at night. I know that no one knows me better than myself. And I know I'll get this right It's just a matter of time till we make it out alive We gotta pick ourselves up and say Not today, no, not today We live for tomorrow, make steel and bow Break where we can change
Dungeons and Daddies is Matt Arnold as Lincoln Wilson, Anthony Birch as our DM, Will Campos as Normal Oak, Beth May as Scary Marlowe, and Freddie Wong as Taylor Swift. Our theme song is On My Way by Maxton Waller. Brian Fernandez is our content producer. Ashley Nicolette is our community manager. Esther Ellis is our lead editor. Travis Reeves provides additional editing. And Robin Rapp is our transcriber. Special thanks to Eric Sapolsky and Skylar for providing names and items we used in this episode. Some of the other fine patrons who support our show are people with the names of Christian Nickdow, Eileen C., Dylan Cook, Nathan Lai, Big Decimal, Trishy, Cuddle Squad, Maggie Ryan, Sarah Crabtray, Lauren Gold, Sean Bernveld, Serana, Slimy Sparrow and Tin Lark, Harold Winchester, Brian and Hazel, Zibani, Cuddle Squad, Brandon Grenier, Alexis Saunders, and Something. You can directly support this show and get ad-free episodes at patreon.com slash dungeonsanddads. The first episode of our Regency Romance miniseries is out. It's called Sons and Sons Abilities. The reviews are in. It's very funny. People like it. Here's a little excerpt. It's just so you can judge for yourself how funny it is. I fear she is in some ways correct. My toes are much dexterous, far much more so than any of my sisters and it has long been a source of some embarrassment, but also one may, in their heart, yearn to believe, perhaps endearing and amusement? I'm ruined! <laughs> you can get this and the remaining two episodes of this three-part miniseries by being a Patreon supporter at any level. At five bucks a month, you can get the entire back catalog of our after shows, as well as all of our bonus one-shots, plus ad-free episodes. At ten dollars a month, you can get that, plus issues of the in-universe teen high high school newspaper with articles written by the teens, as well as the entire back catalog of monthly bonuses. This month, Beth requested to be scared in VR, so she put on the VR headset, and we put her into Phasmophobia and Five Nights at Freddy's, and and uh, there's some jump scares. Just premium VR jump scare video content. I think I, I heard some people got popular on YouTube for that. All that and more on our Patreon at patreon.com slash dungeons and dads. And hey, listen, if you're listening and you already support us on Patreon, thanks. Thanks. You can support us in other ways, too. You can get merch. Our merch is at store.dungeonsanddaddies.com. Our website is dungeonsanddaddies.com. Our Twitter is Dungeons and Dads. Our subreddit is Dungeons and Daddies. Our TikTok is DN Dads Podcast. Our next episode comes out May 31st. We will see you then. If you're trying to come up with, like, acronyms, like, we already came up with, like, Female Body Inspector, Fuckboy Island. (laughs) (laughs) Coming to Netflix this fall. (laughs)